This is Guilherme Trevisan, and in this video I want to show you how to use my script GT Render Checklist. So when you open it, you're going to see a list of what it's going to check. In the Help menu, we can see how it works. So gray is not tested, green is a pass caller, yellow is a warning caller, red is an error, black is an exception, and a question mark means that the script can do something for you. So let's test it. If I click in Refresh, you can see that I have no issues in this scene. So let's open another scene full of issues. Now when I click in Refresh, I can see that my scene has a lot of issues. Let's go through each one of them. You can see that the first one checks the frame rate. The expected one is film, or 24 frames per second. So let's get the script to fix this one for us. And you can see it fixed the issue for us. Okay, the next issue seems to be the scene units. This scene is set to inches, while the expected value is centimeters. We could change this manually, but let's get the script to fix this for us. And you can see it's now changed to the expected value, centimeters. So let's go to the next issue. You can see here it looks like the resolution is not the expected one. And we can just get the script to fix this for us. The next one is total texture count. As you can see, I have 88 and it expects to find less than 50. Keep in mind that it counts UDIMs as textures. Even if you have just one file node, it might give you a higher number based on how many UDIM tiles you have. So let's delete some of my file nodes here to reduce this number. And you can see that now it's yellow. It's just a warning telling you that you have a lot of textures. If I delete just a few more, you can see that it becomes green. The next one checks the network file paths. What it does is it checks to see if the path for your texture file starts with the expected string. But what is the expected path? If I check the settings, I can see that my path is supposed to be on the desktop. So let's move my file to the desktop and update the path. And now you can see that the error is gone because the file is in the expected path. This is especially helpful for render farms as you can check if the files are in the network. So let's see the next issue. As you can see, it's pretty much the same thing, but now it's about the references. So let's check our references. As you can see, it's not on my desktop. And in the settings, it says that it expects it to be on my desktop. So let's change that. And now that it's on my desktop, you can see that I get no errors. Okay, so the next error is unparented objects. What it means is it expects to find geometry and all these other objects inside of groups for organization. If I put everything inside of a group, you can see I get no errors. The next one is a total triangle count. You can see that in my scene, I have some really dense spheres. So I'm just going to delete a few of them. And you can see that it fixed the issue. The next one is total poly object count. I have 106 and it expects me to have less than 100. So let's delete a few of them. And the issue is gone. The next one is the amount of lights casting shadows. And after deleting a few of them, it returns no errors. The next one is the same thing, but for redshift lights. And another one for Arnold Lights. The next check is for objects with default names. So I went through my objects and changed their name to something else. And you can see that this fixes the errors. The next check is for objects assigned to Lambert 1. And if I just assign another material to my objects, it should fix the issue. The next one checks your scene for n-gons. And then non-manifold geometry. The next one checks for empty UV sets. If the main one is empty, then it ignores it. But if you have a second one that is empty, then it, it considers it an error. You can see here that I have UVs in the first one, but the second one is empty. So let's just delete it. And the error is gone. This one you can see is just a warning. It's for objects with values in the rotation. So maybe you forgot to freeze them. I'm just going to freeze the transforms for this cube. 
and you should fix the issue. The next check looks for animated visibility or hidden objects. It says one plus two because you only get a warning for invisible objects. The next check looks for objects with history. So I'm just going to delete their history and you should fix the issue. I accidentally fixed the, the last check when I deleted my textures. So let me load the, the broken scene again. So this one checks for the color space of your textures. So here you can see the issues. I have a file node connected to the color of my shader and it's using the color space raw. While this other one is connected to a value and it's using sRGB. I could fix this, but I'm just going to delete the nodes to show you that it fixes the errors. And in this other example, you can see that if I have the correct color spaces, it doesn't give me any errors. So let's bring back that other scene where everything is working so I can show you some other things. So I'm going to turn off Redshift just so you can see what happens. You can see if I run without redshift, it becomes black and it tells me that there's no redshift loaded. But if I turn it back on, you can see that now it checks for redshift nodes. If you're running a newer version of this script, make sure to check the help menu. If there are any new checks, I'm going to explain what they do in here and what the expected values are. If you want to tweak the expected values, you can just click in settings. In here, you can change the warning values, the error values, as well as the paths. If you want to export these settings into another computer, you can just click in export. It will save a TXT file carrying all the settings. And you can click import in another computer. And there is also this generate report function. If you click here, it generates a TXT file containing all the errors and exactly what objects are causing them. Let me show you in the broken scene so it makes more sense. As you can see, it generates a list telling you what objects caused the error and some more details about it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.